Hello, welcome to this video. Let's get a general overview on the most important features and tools inside the newest Adobe Illustrator CC 2019. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel and our website for free and extra content and news. Adobe Illustrator is a professional product dedicated to vector drawing, graphic editing, and manipulation. It is used to realize logos, vector paths, and custom designs and shapes, and it is available only under a monthly subscription plan. To get a complete overview on all the features of this product, let's start from a new document by going to File and then to New. In this video, we are not going to see the home screen workspace. On the New Document dialog box, you can set all the document properties before creating it. On top, choose any standard template from Mobile to Art and Illustration, or go to Recent to find the latest templates used and to Saved to find your own custom ones. Once the template is chosen, you can customize it as you like on the Preset Details panel on the right. Set the document name on top its size and width and height, its orientation, and the number of pages or artboards. At the bottom, under Bleed, set the distance between the borders of the page and the content of the document. On Advanced Options, fix the color mode and the document resolution in PPI. Once you click on Create, the new project opens on the main Illustrator interface. Showing all the main drawing and editing tools on the toolbar on the left, the full document preview on the center, and useful panels to adjust and manage your objects on the right. You can open and show other panels by going to the Window tab. You can also change the kind of workspace with the list in the top right corner. In this video, we will just use the default Essentials workspace. To open other files or projects, you can go to File and then to Open. You can browse for other projects from Illustrator, Photoshop, or CAD software, or pick and open any image directly. All these files are open inside the workspace as Illustrator documents with their dedicated tabs on top, complete with their file name. An Illustrator document is made by two main kinds of objects, the images and the vectors. Images and pictures are objects that are rendered into pixels, which lose quality in case they get edited or scaled. Vectors are straight lines and curved paths that save their resolution until you render these. Let's see how to draw and work with vector objects. You can find any drawing or editing tool inside the toolbar on the left. This can be customized as you like by using the full list at the bottom, dragging and dropping any extra tool you need. Moreover, some of these tools also show a white corner indicating that multiple tools are grouped together. In this case, just right-click on the button to choose the correct tool. Use the Line Segment tool to draw straight segments by clicking and dragging on the document. You can also click once on the document to drop the segment after defining its length in points and its inclination in degrees, in respect to the horizontal direction. You can use the Pencil, the Paintbrush, or the Blob Brush tool to draw curves freehand by clicking and dragging. Enable the rectangle, the ellipse, the polygon, and the star tool to drop closed 2D objects with a defined shape. You can click and drag on the document directly, or click once to define its properties first. The pen tool is a very advanced tool to draw 2D curves professionally. Click on the document to define the vertices and the straight sides of the shape, and click and hold on to create curved sides. At this point, you can finish your drawing by closing the shape or using the Escape key. You can adjust any tool option by double-clicking on its button. 
To check your drawings, you can zoom in and out by holding down the Alt key and using your mouse wheel. You could also pan by holding down the spacebar key. Illustrator has several drawing aids to help you with the creation and the modification of your objects. When using any drawing tool, a small dialog box shows length and inclination or width and height of the object in progress. This object is shown with its basic skeleton in blue color that gets contour and fill once the object is created. The same skeleton is taken as reference to create snappings to object key points such as vectors, paths, centers, and also any parallel or perpendicular direction. Now let's see how to edit vectors and images inside the document. To edit an object, you have to select it first. You can do this by holding down the control key and clicking on it or you can also enable the Selection tool and click on it. Selected objects show their skeleton and several nodes you can use to edit it. Click and drag the object to move it. Use its white nodes to scale. Drag outside its contours to rotate it. In some regular shapes, you can also use rounded nodes to adjust the sharpness of the vertices. Use Ctrl and X, C, and V to cut, copy, and paste the selected object. You can use Ctrl and Z to undo your latest actions. You can also move and edit multiple objects by selecting all of these together. You can do so by enabling the Selection tool and clicking and dragging over all the objects to select these. Whereas to edit and adjust the object appearance, select it and use the Properties window on the right. Under Transform, you can adjust its horizontal or vertical position with X and Y, its size with Width, W, and Height, H, its inclination in degrees, and also flip the object horizontally or vertically. Under Appearance, you can use Stroke, to adjust the object contour in color and thickness over the same object skeleton. Use Fill to set the fill color within the object shape and use Opacity to adjust the transparency level in percentage. You can also set the stroke and the fill color at the bottom side of the toolbox. Here you can also use the second rectangle to apply a color gradient through the gradient panel. Adjust the gradient direction with type, its inclination in degrees, and the colors with the slider at the bottom, double-clicking on the markers to change color, and moving the rhombus markers to set the transitions. You can also edit the slider directly on the object and adjust, move, rotate, and size it directly on the shape. To remove any stroke or fill color, just choose the white rectangle with a red strip line in the list. The way the stroke and fill colors are applied on 2D paths depends on the drawing tool chosen to draw these. Straight lines can have any stroke color but no fill. Curves made with the pencil or the paintbrush tool have stroke and also fill, which is applied within the contours. You can also change the stroke style inside the Properties panel under Brush. All drawings made with the Blob Brush tool behave differently. Each brush has indeed both stroke and fill due to its skeleton, which is a closed shape instead of a simple line. Consider that images and pictures do not admit any stroke or fill. Below the Appearance properties, you can also go to the FX icon to apply amazing effects on both vector drawings and pictures. Just select an effect from the list and fix its settings. All the effects applied are listed inside the Appearance panel that you can open through the button in the bottom right corner. Here, use the eye icon to enable and disable each effect and double-click on the FX icon to edit the effect settings. 
Other extra tools inside the full list can also be used to apply effects by brushing on the objects directly. Check these out. The pen tool is also used to refine all your straight or curved drawings made with any tool. Select a vector object and click on its path to add new points or anchors. Then you can shape the curve on each single anchor point by holding down the Alt key and clicking and dragging from it or from its handles. Remember to use Ctrl and Z to undo your latest modifications. To remove an object, just select it and use the Delete key. Whereas to remove parts from any drawing, you can enable the Eraser tool and brush directly. This acts on its skeleton directly, affecting stroke and fill as well. All vectors and images inside the document are collected inside the Layers window on the right. A layer is a group of lines, paths, and images collected together, sharing the same skeleton color that is equal to the layer color they belong to. By default, just one blue layer, called Layer 1, is present, but you can create a new one by going to Create New Layer at the bottom. At this point, you can move an object from one layer to another, getting a new skeleton color equal to the new layer. From the Layers window, you can also select an object or the whole layer group by clicking on the circle on the right. The Layers panel is also used to arrange the visibility between the objects inside the document. Use the eye icon on the left to hide or show an object or a whole layer. In case objects overlap, you can pull these up or down from the Layers panel to adjust their order. All objects staying on top of the list are shown in front of all objects placed at the bottom. You can also type pieces of text by using the Type tools. Click and drag on the document to create a text box used to delimit the text content. Then type inside horizontally or vertically, depending on the kind of type tool you have chosen. You can move, scale, and rotate the text box by holding down the control key or using the selection tool. If the text box is too small, part of the content is hidden, showing a small red square. In this case, you have to resize the box until you see the whole text content showing up. Use the Properties window to adjust the text properties and appearance. Correct position, size, and inclination of the text box under Transform. Set text color, contour, opacity, and apply any effect under appearance. And correct text font, style, size, and distribution under character and paragraph. Remember to select the text before changing its properties or these won't be applied. You can also enable the Type on a Path tool to type text along the basic skeleton of an object, and Area Type tool to type within a closed object shape. Just click on the object skeleton to start typing. Now let's see how to save and render your document. To save the document, Go to File, and then to Save As, adding document name and destination. Illustrator documents are saved with a AI format, saving everything regarding your objects, options, properties, and effects applied. Whereas to export and print your document, just go to File, and then to Export. Choose Export As to render your document into a CAD project, or a PSD Photoshop document, and go to Export for Screens to render your document into an image in several formats, such as JPEG, PNG, and PDF. Thanks for watching this video. Please visit our YouTube channel and our website for more free and extra content for Adobe Creative Cloud.